Hi friends, it's Nathan and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So we are at the sixth, yes, yes. We're at the sixth video in the series, Spilling the University, uh, where my friends and I share what it's like to be a student at various Canadian universities. Uh, you can find the whole playlist linked above or in the description box below. And we are approaching the end of the series. There's only a couple more schools left. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. Um, it means a lot to me and it also makes my friends and I really, really happy that we're able to uh, answer your question, uh, ease some nervousness before uh, you go off into university, especially uh, with the added uncertainty caused by the pandemic. Um, so thank you. Today's video is on the University of British Columbia, or UBC. Uh, I've asked my friend Ashley to share her experience on what it's like being a student at UBC. Uh, so without further ado, here's Ashley. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley and today I'm going to be answering some questions about the University of British Columbia. So just a little bit about myself. I just completed my first year studying in the Faculty of Arts. As for my major, I'm currently undeclared, but I am thinking about doing a combined major in Philosophy and Economics. So the first question is, why did I choose UBC? And I'd say I chose UBC for a number of reasons, uh, the first being its rankings. So when I was picking universities, I, I went online. I uh, did some research and I found a bunch of rankings. These rankings compared Canadian universities over various topics um, and I found that UBC fairly consistently ranked like within the top three and so while rankings definitely aren't everything, UBC's rankings made me feel confident that I would be receiving a very good education if I attended the school and that ultimately I would be graduating with a degree from a university with a very strong reputation. So the second reason why I chose UBC uh, was because of its environment. School environment was an important factor that played into my decision because ultimately I have a goal of attending law school and in order to do so, uh, you do need a high GPA. And so I wanted to attend a school with an environment that would allow me to do so. And I thought UBC was a great fit for that because uh, the students there are academically competitive as in they're super driven, they're hardworking. Um, and I thought being surrounded by people like that would push me to do the best I could, you know, to work as hard as I can. Um, but at the same time, they weren't academically competitive in like a toxic way. Uh, it wasn't like cutthroat competition where people would try to sabotage you or other students felt threatened um, if they found out that you were doing well in the class. Also, I felt that the school environment at UBC was super supportive. Um, in various ways. Uh, like professors are super eager to help you as long as you reach out to them, uh, whether it be like after class or office hours. Um, and yeah, like they're willing to help you even beyond the scope of their own class, such as if you had questions about uh, the fields they work in, their own research. Also class sizes at UBC, considering how large of a school it is, uh, the class sizes are reasonably small. And of course that allows professors to get to know students on a more personal level. Another way uh, UBC fosters a very supportive environment, I guess, is through its like support services, um, such as like their mental health support. I felt that all the support on campus, like I said, whether it be these services or the professors or even just the student environment, would allow me to thrive even in such an academically competitive environment. So the next question is uh, about campus. And so UBC actually has two campuses, the Vancouver campus and uh, the Kelowna campus. I'm at the Vancouver campus. So I guess what I'm gonna say next only applies to the Vancouver campus. Um, the Vancouver campus is very large. Um, I guess just to put it into perspective, uh, first semester I had a class that was located like the midpoint of campus. And right after that, I had a class that was on one end of campus. and you have 10 minutes to get from one class to another and in order for me to get from my first class to my second class in those 10 minutes i actually had to get a bike um just because of how large campus is 
So uh, hopefully that gives you an idea um, and I ho hope that it doesn't scare you because there are a lot of options of getting around campus, people skateboard, people bike, and of course there's always the option of not picking classes that are far away from each other, um, not having them back to back. So in addition to the campus being super big, um, it's also really beautiful. We have a few older looking buildings, but for the most part, like most of the buildings are quite modern and very nice, um, both the outside and the lecture halls inside. Besides the buildings, the campus itself is surrounded by nature. We are surrounded by the Pacific, I think it's Pacific Spirit Region Park. On campus, we have two gardens, the Natobi Garden and the Rose Garden, and they're both very beautiful, very serene places on campus. You can actually see like the mountains and the ocean from the Rose Garden. The campus itself is like a 50 minute bus ride from downtown Vancouver, which I think is great because that way the city is still super accessible for like job opportunities. But um, because UBC's campus is situated like by itself, um, I, I feel like that creates a stronger sense of community. So speaking of the city, uh, Vancouver is very beautiful. Uh, there are lots of mountains and lakes, so lots of opportunities for hiking and skiing that are fairly accessible, um, like you could get there using public transit. Although, like I mentioned earlier, uh, UBC is located kind of on its own in order to get to like downtown Vancouver, West Van, North Van. Um, it is like over an hour commute. As for downtown Vancouver, of course, it's a metropolitan city, so there's lots of nightlife, restaurants, uh, shopping. However, like in comparison to Toronto, it's definitely a lot, I guess, smaller and quieter. It's not as busy, there's not as much traffic. Um, that's just what I noticed uh, coming here. Uh, so as for the academics and the teaching at UBC, um, I'd have to say so far my experience with it has been quite positive. Going into my first year, I feel like I expected to have like some bad professors, but honestly all the professors I had during first year were really great. Um, you know, a large part of this might have been because I did use Rate My Prof. Um, before picking my courses so I kind of had an idea of what I was getting myself into but even then I definitely did not expect my profs to be as approachable and understanding as they were. Sometimes in university you'll wind up with uh, one week where all of your courses has something to do whether it be a midterm or an essay and that can be super overwhelming. I just have anxiety. Um, but actually a lot of my professors had policies and they were willing to grant you like an extension when you were put into circumstances like that. So it was great having professors that were sensitive to students' uh, needs. So as for the teaching, I was also really impressed by how passionate my professors were about the subjects that they were teaching and let me tell you as a student that definitely makes a difference when your professor is you know, engage with what they're talking about. Cause like I've had courses where, you know, the content itself is definitely not something I was super interested in and wasn't my cup of tea, but because of how engaging the professor was, coming out of the class, I still feel like I learned something and you know, I was still able to do well in the class. So another great thing about the academics and the teaching at UBC um, is definitely like, the help centers uh, that they have on campus. Um, I, I went to the math help center and the biology help center for my calculus and my biology courses and these centers are run by like upper year students or like TAs and yeah if you have questions with like your problem set or like you're studying for a midterm and you know there's concepts that you don't fully grasp you can go to them and they'll answer your questions or they'll guide you uh, through your problem sets and it's honestly super helpful because uh, these upper year students are quite relatable because you know they were in your shoes at some point too. Look, I went through the same thing, I promise you. Another help center that I personally didn't visit but I know that they offer on campus is like a writing center and so that's super helpful for like if you are able to finish your essay before it's due, you can bring it to the center and... I'm not sure uh, 
who runs it, but the people there can like go through the essay with you and give you some feedback before you hand it in. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that though UBC does definitely expect a lot from its students academically, it is very possible to succeed because of the teaching and uh, teaching resources on campus. So in terms of the culture at UBC, UBC is very diverse. Um, about a third of the students that attend UBC are international students. And so I guess that translates to the student culture here at UBC definitely values inclusivity and diversity. So there are three first year residence options at UBC. Um, the first being a single room where you know you have your own bedroom but you share a communal washroom on the floor. Then there are the shared rooms where you share a room with a roommate and then you also share the communal washroom on your floor. And then the third option is the single connected where your room is connected to uh, your roommate's room through a shared washroom. Uh, there are also three first year residence buildings at EBC. Um, I guess one of them is Place Vanier. That one is the oldest residence we have on campus and they only contain the shared rooms and the single rooms. Then the next residence is Orchard Commons. Orchard Commons is the newest residence on campus and the entire building is comprised of only single connected rooms and the third is Totem Park and it's got a mix of all three residence options um, and it has a mix of older buildings like Vanier but it also has a, a few newer buildings as well. So I actually got my first choice room and I was put into the single connected rooms um, and I loved it. Um, my room was super spacious and I loved not having to share a washroom with other people. Also my roommate and I really got along. So I would totally recommend the single connected rooms for those reasons. But uh, some people do say that the other two options where you share a communal washroom um, that they prefer that because sharing a communal washroom is an opportunity uh, to make friends that way. And so while I can totally see that perspective, I was still able to make a lot of friends on my floor even though we were all uh, in single connected rooms. So just food for thought, um, those are a bit of the pros and cons of the different rooming options at UBC. Orientation week at UBC is, I'd say a little bit different from what it's like at other schools. So it's called Jumpstart and it's a one week program that takes place before school starts and during this one week you get to explore campus, uh, you're introduced uh, to like professors in your faculty and obviously you can make a lot of friends during this week. Um, I do say it's a little bit different uh, than O week at other schools because I feel like it's not as big of an event compared to what it is at other schools and I think that that's because it's almost like an optional thing at UBC. Not everyone attends Jumpstart. Um, it does cost extra. I think if, you, if you're living on residence, it's gonna cost an extra $500. Personally, I didn't attend Jumpstart and I know a lot of other people that didn't and the transition into university was still easy. You know, you're still able to make a lot of friends. But at the same time, I also do know quite a few people that did go to Jumpstart and they really enjoyed getting to familiarize themselves on campus and make friends that way. So even if you don't end up going to Jumpstart, uh, there's also Imagine Day, which happens just one day before uh, school starts and it's just for first year students. On Imagine Day, you're gonna be grouped with other students and everyone in that group all shares at least one class in common and on that day, um, you know, you're gonna do a, a campus tour. I think you have like a Q&A session with a prof. Um, and then at the end, everyone comes and gets together and has a huge pep rally. Um, and then after the pep rally, uh, then there's going to be a clubs fair down Main Mall, which is like the main strip on campus. So Imagine Day is pretty fun, but what I thought was really nice about it is that you're grouped with people that uh, you're, you share a class with. And so, you know, the next day when school actually starts and you walk into your class, it definitely calms the nerves at least a little bit to already know some people in your class and so you can like sit with them. So that's really cool. So lastly, we also have an annual back to school barbecue. So that's just a concert and we usually have some pretty huge performers. Um, I mean, I include this in here, but it's honestly not really an orientation we kind of think because it happens like a month into school. But it's definitely something fun that you should look forward to at the beginning of the school year. 
So partying at UBC, um, if you're a first year student, I feel like most of the parties that you're gonna go to are gonna be at the frats and that's because um, first year students usually aren't of age and so you won't be able to get into the clubs downtown or on campus. Uh, I guess another option is partying on residences, but there are pretty strict rules um, about partying and you can get written up if you're caught so party at your own risk and yeah so residence parties aren't too common in terms of the party culture at ubc um i think it's definitely what you make of it like i said there are a lot of options uh, for partying whether it be on campus or off campus um, especially with downtown vancouver being so accessible um, you're gonna have access to a lot of nightclubs um, but at the same time, if partying's not your thing, um, I don't think anyone's gonna force you to party. And there are also a lot of other fun activities to do on campus or even just in Vancouver if partying isn't your thing. So the last question is about clubs and extracurriculars and uh, UBC definitely has a lot of different clubs to offer and I feel like that's because of the diverse student body I mentioned earlier. Because there's so many international students, there are a lot of different like cultural related clubs. We also have a lot of other clubs that are related to programs and then a lot of other interest groups. I'm personally part of the UBC's Best Buddies Club, um, which is a club that facilitates like friendships between UBC students and individuals in the Vancouver area with intellectual disabilities. I'm also an exec on the pre-law society here at UBC. And so I would definitely recommend joining extracurriculars. It's a great opportunity to make friends. Um, and I would also totally recommend, um, if you're interested, applying for executive positions on clubs because uh, that allows you to get more involved with uh, what your club is doing. In terms of sports at UBC, I'm not too sure of varsity sports um, except walk-ons, but some of the smaller sports at UBC like synchronized swimming and frisbee, uh, they do have tryouts and I think they even accept people that have like never played the sport before. And these sports, they're still fairly competitive. They have practices and I think they uh, compete against other schools. Um, another way to get involved with sports on campus are intramurals. Um, I personally do volleyball intramurals um, and for me it's a really fun way to relieve stress and it's super low commitment, it's only once a week. So those are all the questions. Thank you for watching. I really hope I was able to help some of you. If you have any other questions, I'm sure you can leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you so much, Ashley, for sharing your experience on what it's like to be a student at the University of British Columbia. If that video helped you in any way, please make sure to give it a like. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section below. I respond to every single question and Ashley will do her very best to answer any of your questions. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing more university related videos, definitely subscribe. Uh, like I said, we are approaching the end of the series, but once the series is over, it will focus back on myself, uh, sharing uh, my my perspective on being a university student, days in the life, uh, sharing my tips and tricks that I've learned uh, along the way, and just helping you be successful in university. Uh, but that's it for me. Uh, thank you, and I will see you friends in the next video. Bye.